What is up, Tugs? Uh, we're approaching the end of summer. We still got a lot of green out. Uh, cha colors aren't changing yet, even though that you can go to Starbucks and get a, a your your fall flavors. And people are putting up uh, Halloween decorations in the stores and stuff. We're not there yet. It's late summer. Uh, and I'm back, hopefully, producing some videos for you guys so that uh, you guys can enjoy some fresh content from that one guy. Uh, I have been out for almost a year. Um, just made an introduction or a reintroduction to myself. Uh, if you're new to the channel, we do have, I do try to make content fairly regularly. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell so you're notified when a new video is available. Typically, I like to post my videos. Uh, I think we were doing Fridays, so we'll, we'll probably do that again so you, you got something to watch over the weekend if you got some time. But anyway, I do have a subject, a topic to talk about today, and it has somewhat relation to me taking a, a, a bit of a break, uh, almost a year. Uh, and that uh, that topic today is kind of when is it time to stop writing or when is it time to consider giving up the hobby giving up the the sport maybe if you're a track writer but when is it time and i think uh and this is all people will say this is a cop out and you know i, I like to make answers like this because really when, when i do topics like this i have an opinion and i'll, I'll share it with you shortly here but but what is, what is your opinion? Leave it in the comments if you have a very strong opinion about when it's time to stop writing. Maybe when you stop writing. Um, and, uh, and also, did you get back into writing? Or maybe do you still have a, a vested interest in writing even though you might not ride yourself anymore? Um, like you watch my channel. If you watch my channel but maybe you don't ride anymore, uh, you can live vicariously through me as I'm out here on the bike. But uh, yeah, uh, when, when was it time for you to stop writing? Maybe are you considering it now and we can talk about that right now. So for, for me, there were various times where I uh, sold a motorcycle and I, there was an in-between period when I had one bike and when I got another bike. Uh, and I think people will go through cycles like that until they settle in for like me where I have the Super Duke 1290R. This is my fifth bike. Uh, this is my fourth, fifth bike. Where I feel comfortable on this bike. This bike is, has everything and is, is everything that I need. Um, it's knock on wood it's reliable so I, there, I have that going for this bike and it's freaking uh, sexy and just cool as hell uh, this is one of those bikes I've had this bike for like four years five years I've had it for a while and I just I will still walk by this bike in the garage and just like you know it's one of the hey <laughs> right you guys know what I'm talking about if you've got a bike like that leave it in the comments what bike that is that you have or maybe that you had uh, I will say, one of the times that I thought I was going to give up riding, I did have a bike, and it was the only time that I've sold a bike where I felt like I regretted it. Uh, maybe just to give you a little history, my first bike was a 1985 Yamaha Ra Radian. Um, it, was a, it was a great starter bike because I could drop it, uh, and you know, it was an older bike. It was reliable enough, uh, and then ended up having to get surgery, so sold that bike. Uh, my second bike was my first Harley Davidson, which was a Sportster 883R. It was 100th anniversary edition as a 2003. Uh, super cool bike. That bike got hit while it was parked and totaled, so I lost that bike. Um, felt like out of my control. Felt like I, I lost that bike. Like it, I wasn't it didn't give it a proper goodbye, right? It was just kind of taken from me. And then uh, after that bike, I ended up getting another Sportster, and this was a, a, an 883 Iron. But it was a special quarter mile edition and this bike oh this was the bike that i wish i still had I, if i could find the person that i sold that bike to and they're selling it or they were there maybe they sold it and, and it's sitting around somewhere in somebody's garage i want that bike there that was the only bike that i sold that i was like ah you know it was one of those times where i had some i had some bills that i paid off when i sold that bike and i hadn't ridden in like six months and i was like i don't like this that this bike is just sitting around not getting ridden and so i sold it i'm um, thinking maybe i wasn't gonna ride anymore but lo and behold it was less than a year later i've ended up buying my fat bob my 2013 uh fat bob uh the the dyna right after uh, harley davidson had announced that the dynas were going away and so i bought that bike um and appreciated that bike but it wasn't just wasn't one of my favorite bikes i think maybe it had something to do with it being so heavy um and something you know 
I liked that I felt like I was upgrading to a bigger bike, but at the same time, it was just so... I wanted something sportier and something that I could whip around and, and like, you know, back in and out of the garage and not feel like it was such a... Um, such a big bike to lunk around. Um, loved the look of it, actually made some modifications. Um, one of my most popular videos was the fender modification that I made on that bike. So that was my the bike that I got and sold before, right before I, I bought this bike. Um, actually bought another 883R because I always felt like I got cheated out of that bike, so I found a really good deal. That was my fifth bike, sixth bike, anyway. So that happened in between all that stuff, but every time I sold a bike and was moving, either moving on to another bike I always felt like riding was somewhere on the horizon. Like even though I might be selling a bike, uh, it, it wasn't the end of riding for me. And so I think that for those of you maybe who are deciding, is it time to stop riding? Is it time to sell my bike and give up riding? I think there are a few questions that you have to ask yourself. First of all, is it because you're not riding, but not that you don't love riding? Is the, or maybe the motorcycle that you own, uh, isn't doing it for you anymore but you're also not wanting to get into another bike payment or if you've got a family or you've got bills to pay these are all things and options that you have to consider when it's you feel like it's maybe time to stop riding and so what i would say to you is put all of those things aside if you love to ride you're going to end up riding again you're going to end up getting another another motorcycle uh, for me, I feel like it's in my blood. I feel like I will. There won't ever be a time where I'm like, yeah, I'm done riding. I won't ever ride again. That, but that's just me. Uh, I my one of my best friends uh, that I've uh, had since I was like in, in fifth grade. He got his drive motorcycle riding license. Uh, he lived in Southern California. He was thinking he could get a bike and you know not have to worry about so much about traffic and he could lane split and stuff. But he never really felt safe riding. And I think that is a perfectly good reason a perfectly good justification to stop riding if you don't feel safe if riding to you feels dangerous because you're not confident uh or you're in a circumstance or like in a lo location where you feel like riding on those roads or those highways or whatever it might be is not safe for you that would absolutely i think be a justification for you to stop riding um if you don't love it if you started riding and riding maybe or owning a motorcycle kind of feels like a chore that might be a good indication that writing is not for you and it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine uh they will obviously be people who even when you're on your writer journey or whatever you might call it that might be like oh you're, you're not a real you're not a real uh biker right you're not you don't really uh i feel like there's a, a segment of the writing population that we would frown upon someone who's not like a moto head somebody who just loves to ride and like their life is motorcycles and but that's fine Every, you know everyone's entitled to their own opinion but my my thing is 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 riding is i'm so passionate about riding i love riding so much that uh i would never want to make someone feel like who just started riding or maybe isn't as confident of a rider uh, maybe doesn't have enough money to get the bike that they really want i don't would ever want to be the person that detracts that person from owning a motorcycle or from riding I am super supportive when someone says they're getting their license um, of helping them out. Uh, we, we just went, uh, actually on Friday, I, I was out riding with my uh, my younger friend Colin, who's 18, 19, and uh, he's just getting into riding and I love supporting his decision, his, his love of riding motorcycles. You know, he, he got a custom paint job for his, his Yamaha, his motorcycle. He loves his bike and he loves to ride and I love being encouraging towards that. So there are perfectly good explanations, perfectly good rationalizations, justifications for you to not ride. But what I would say is um, it's time to stop riding when the love is gone. Call it a break. Call it a break when you feel like maybe because of budgetary uh, restrictions or maybe you're raising a young family and you don't feel like you should take the uh, the risk of riding a motorcycle. Uh, that's, again, these are things that I hear all the time and they're perfectly uh, good reasons to stop riding. But what I would say is, is call it a pause. Say that I don't ride now. I would say, 
if you make that decision to not ride again, and I would hate for that to be a something where you, you're saying that you're not riding anymore, that you don't ride anymore, but really deep down inside, you do want to ride. And one of the things about when I first got my 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 uh, my motorcycle license, my endorsement on my California driver's license, my M1, uh, was my wife said, "If you really want to get a motorcycle license, I don't want to be the person that tells you to tells you no, that says that you can't do something that you really want to do." And she knew she knew that I would be safe, a safe rider, and that I wouldn't ride like, you know, you know. And so. Uh, don't be that person for yourself. Don't make your situation to where, oh, I told myself I wouldn't ride anymore because there are reasons to stop riding, um, but one of them isn't because um, of some promise you made to yourself that you wouldn't ride because it's not safe. Uh, get a bike, get a bike, ride it around town. Get a garage queen, let it sit there and, and admire, admire your motorcycle and, and only ride <laughs> around town. So I guess, the, 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 the large point that I'm trying to make here is, and I'm doing it very slowly and deliberately, <laughs> is that if you love riding, don't give it up. Give it up when you can't walk anymore, when you're physically incapable of doing so. But don't, uh, don't, let, uh, don't let dumb reasons keep you from riding. If you love to do it, do it. That's all I got for you guys today. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button. If you're out there riding, please be safe. Be kind to one another. My name is Eric. I'm that one guy. And I am.